This is Kyle Smith with Haggerty, and in this DIY, we are talking all things spark plugs. And that means how they function, what they can tell you about the inside of your engine, and what the different types are. So we're gonna start with the construction of a spark plug. And they seem like such simple things, but the reality is there's a lot going on inside what you see there. And so I drew this handy little cutaway that we can look at and reference against a plug laid here. And the first thing here is the cap, and that is where your spark plug wire attaches to. As you move down the plug, the next is a ceramic porcelain insulator. And that has the electrode traveling through it and insulates that electrode from the ground that is the casing. And as it travels down through there, you can see it extends out to the very base of the plug. And that electrode will then arc or create that spark between the electrode and the ground strap that extends out into the combustion chamber. So that is the basic components of a spark plug. And I've actually cut a few apart to show you how changing a couple of the components can change the type of plug that you're looking at. The difference lies in the actual construction. And so I went ahead and separated the insulator from the casing on each of these. And you can see here, this is a BR4ES. So this is the hottest plug. A BR6, which is the middle of their range. And then a BR9, which is going to be the coldest plug. The key to this is the insulation in that porcelain ceramic uh, construction around the electrode. What that does is transfers the heat from the combustion chamber through the casing of the spark plug and out into the cylinder head or engine block. If you have more insulation, that is considered a colder plug. If you have less insulation, that is considered a hotter plug. How these are rated and the numbers signifying each and how it's constructed varies between manufacturers. And so the key thing to remember is to reference both your service manual to find the correct heat range for your application, as well as reference materials for the spark plug manufacturer so you can select the proper plug. So the goal of the porcelain ceramic is to maintain the temperature at the tip of the plug. You want to keep it between 900 and 1500 degrees for most spark plug applications. And that is because at that temperature, that is enough that any combustion uh, byproducts or oil or gas is going to burn off of the spark plug tip, keeping that clean. If it goes above 1500 degrees, that can cause issues in degrading the porcelain uh, or breaking up the electrode. If you go on the cold side of things, that means that can build up on the tip of the plug and eventually foul it. So something like this is a very cold plug in the NGK line. That is a BR6ES. You can see there's a lot of insulation on that one. That is going to take a lot of heat from the combustion chamber and dump it into the engine block. Whereas this BR4 is what they consider a hot plug. There's very little insulation there. It is going to keep a lot of its heat in the electrode, which is great for an engine that maybe has some really tired piston rings, has a lot more oil in the combustion chamber, it's going to be able to burn that off and keep it clean. However, changing these spark plug ranges uh, or changing the heat range of your plug, you need to be careful with it because you can end up with poor running if you select the wrong one. So after looking at the varying heat ranges, let's take a look at the construction of the plugs and the different materials used to construct them. I've laid out four different types here, and these are the most common four that you're going to interact with when working on vehicles. So here we're gonna show you an extreme close-up of how these tips look at a, essentially a macro level. And the first that we have here is actually a copper plug, and this is a coated nickel alloy, but they are called copper plugs because that is the main material that is making up the wear parts underneath. This one is just a standard plug. This is common on many older engines. You can see it's just a traditional design for the ground strap and the electrode. The main drawback to a copper plug is they just don't last as long. They can be consumed under regular wear and tear. And so that is why the copper plug has faded from usage and more often than not, modern engines go to this platinum plug here. And you can see that it is a little bit different in terms of how the electrode end is relative to the ground strap and it has a little bit different shape. These platinum plugs are very common in late model engines. So if you're looking at anything 1998, 2000 or newer, uh, it's probably going to have a platinum plug in it. 
If you're looking to upgrade from a platinum plug in maybe a high performance application or looking for a little bit fuel economy, most spark plug manufacturers will recommend a double platinum plug like this one here, which is easily identifiable from the nub that sits just opposite the electrode on the ground strap. So in this case, not only is the electrode platinum, but also the ground strap is platinum. So this can up the wear characteristics of a standard platinum plug, which normally you will see the ground strap degrade and disappear over time and double that usage. So a standard platinum plug can last 60 to 100,000 miles. A double platinum plug you might even get more usage out of over time. Last plug, or essentially the most modern plug, is also a rare earth metal, and this one is iridium. And you can see the electrode on this has an extremely fine point, and these often come pre-gapped or already set up, so you won't have to go about gapping one of these. You can take them right out of the box and put it into the car, unlike the platinum and copper plugs. The double platinum often can sometimes come pre-gapped, but the iridium is one that you do not want to touch after you take it out of the box. So this one is good to go. So the last thing to touch on on spark plug construction is the seat type or this way it seals against your cylinder head or engine block. All four of these that you see here that we had been discussing use a standard gasket style, uh, which is free floating separate from the actual threads of the plug. Now the last type or one that you might come across out in the wild is this conical seat style. And the trick to these conical seats is that it is matched to a similarly cut seat in the cylinder head or the engine block. So you wanna make sure that you're only using this type of plug if it is called for, if the engine has been machined for that. Another thing to mention on these conical seat style is they require a very low torque spec relative to a gasket style. Some of these can be as low as 10 to 14 foot pounds, whereas a gasket type can be a bit more you want to make sure to reference not only the spark plug manufacturer's torque setting, but also the one in your service manual for the specific engine you're working on. So now that we've talked about the construction of spark plugs and the differences between various types, let's talk about what a spark plug can tell you. As we look at these plugs, I'm gonna talk you through a few of the things that a plug can tell you after you pull it out of a running engine. And the first one that we're looking at here is a plug that has a lot of corrosion. You can see every surface has some form of degradation to it. The electrode is slightly worn away, as is the ground strap, and then actually the porcelain on it looks to be almost oil fouled as it's black instead of a nice light tan that you typically like to see. This plug came out of a non-running long stored engine, so it should be no surprise that it's in such bad shape. If you pulled this out of a running engine, I would honestly be surprised. The second plug that we're looking at actually came out of a similar engine that was non-running when I received it, but I could believe that this cylinder was actually firing. It's definitely worn in every way, but you can see that that porcelain is actually the correct color. It's kind of that light tan to almost white, which means that it's the appropriate heat range for how the engine was running and it is self-cleaning. Whereas that first one that we looked at was likely not running hot enough to actually self-clean. So this third plug that we're looking at here is what a decent spark plug should look like. I pulled this out of my running 1965 Chevrolet Corvair right when I purchased it and changed to a fresh set of plugs and a new ignition, just a basic tune-up. But you can see there's a little bit of wear on the ground strap as well as the electrode, but you can see that that porcelain ceramic is getting hot enough to self-clean and there's not buildup anywhere on any of the parts of the spark plug, which means that this is probably still good to use. I keep it around as a spare. So this plug here, I pulled out of a running engine, but I'm using it as an example to show of when it might make sense to look at the spark plug as an early sign of other problems that are going on. With the amount of oil that is fouling this plug, and you can see that it's covering the porcelain, more than likely, I think this engine might have bad piston rings. So this might be a time where in changing these plugs, I actually go back and do a compression test to see how those rings are sealing and how it's working. Otherwise, I need to find the source for where all of this oil is coming from and how it's getting into the combustion chamber. And this fifth example is a perfect look at a fouled plug. 
and you can see it is fouled from not only oil, but more than likely other byproducts of combustion as well. So there's definite buildup, not only on the porcelain, but also here on the back of the ground strap. And you can even see if you look very close at the electrode that it has a slight dome to it, meaning that it has been used up over time. This plug is absolutely done. It has served its time. For the sake of curiosity and showing you exactly what this looks like, I'm gonna go ahead and take that plug and clean off all the debris that is on it, just with a wire brush and a little bit of chemical brake clean and see what it looks like underneath. So this is the fifth plug that I went ahead and cleaned up. I started with a wire brush, but there was so much buildup and material on it that I actually had to go over and stick it in the sandblaster to remove everything. And with that all off, you can see so clearly the dome on the electrode and that should have nice square edges to it. So with the wear on that plug, that is how it gets that dome shape and the squared edges slowly get consumed away closer to the porcelain. So that is an example of a plug that was running too cold and thus had build up and fouled. If you were on the opposite end of the spectrum and had a plug that was running too hot or had detonation issues, that would have a slight cracking on the porcelain as well as a almost orange uh, slight sheen to it. Just for example, I'm gonna point at this brand new plug to show you the areas where a plug that is running too hot or possibly has detonation issues would show it. And if the plug is running too hot, you need to look at the porcelain area, that ceramic porcelain. And if it has an orange color or is beginning to crack or have spots on it, that means it's running too hot or that you have pre-ignition or detonation issues. Another sign of pre-ignition or detonation is that the ground strap will begin to erode and essentially be consumed until it disappears almost completely. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you picked up some new information about the spark plugs in your car. Be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. And if there's a topic that you're curious about that you think we should cover, go ahead and leave it as a comment down below. That's actually really bad.